Well, good morning, an official good morning, and welcome to our online worship service for Park Minister United Church, whether you're joining us via Zoom or via Facebook this morning. We're glad that you're with us, and we hope that um, you find a sense of community and the, some spiritual nurture this morning uh, for the week ahead. Um, as we celebrate today, All Saints Sunday, and remember the legacy of faith that's left to us by our forebears on this, also this 62nd anniversary of Parkminster United Church as well. So at this time, Heather is going to share some announcements for this morning. Thanks, Joe. So if you have an announcement, Joe, you keep muting, please. That <laughs> That's yours. Um, so if you do have an announcement this morning, just please type it in the chat and I'll invite you to turn your camera and mic on in just a moment. Uh, at the end of the service, you're welcome to leave the meeting if you're in Zoom by clicking on the red leave meeting button. Uh, but we would love for you to stay. We do have a virtual coffee time. Uh, you can stay, have some coffee, tea, catch up with us, and we'll turn cameras back on and it's a chance to chat and talk with one another. We often get to use audio towards the end if there's not too many folks with us near the end of our time. Just to note that Neil is away this morning. He's away this weekend and we miss him, but he very kindly pre-recorded lots of beautiful music for us. So we've got lots of great music and Joe and I are not singing for you. So that's a blessing. Um, Reverend Joe will be away on study leave beginning tomorrow and will return the following Tuesday. So we wish him well for that week. And Joe, I think for one of the announcements, you were going to share a picture. Yeah. Do you want to do that? And I'll share that announcement now. So you'll see this great picture of Wendy Watson. Uh, Parkminster member Janet Holland has written a book describing her experiences while working for the United Church of Canada in an Indigenous reg residential school and the difficult times endured since then. There has been such a wonderful response to the book that it is in its second printing and Janet has raised in excess of $600 in donations so far that will support the healing of the Seven Generations Christmas program. She thanks the congregation for their generosity and support and we thank Janet for sharing this book with us. If you would like a copy, please contact Janet whose information is in the WhatsApp. Books are available for a minimum donation of $15, and John and Wendy Watson have offered to deliver the books. And so our thanks to them for that, and to Wendy for this great picture, the creative way we do things during COVID. I think those are the announcements I have, but I see some on my screen. So Kathy Short, I'll invite you first to turn your camera and mic on. Good morning, everyone. Uh, council met this past week and decided to accept the recommendation uh, of the COVID-19 working group to remain closed until early January. This was a difficult decision because like many of you, we wish to be back in the sanctuary for worship. There were multiple factors for this decision. One was that the second wave of COVID-19 seems to be gaining strength. Another was that we don't know if we will get the grant to upgrade our broadcasting equipment until possibly later December. So a return to the sanctuary would mean giving up our interactive Zoom services with our chat feature and our slides. Uh, we have our fingers crossed that we will be back in church in the new year. And I know this morning when I heard the choir singing that beautiful anthem in during the prelude, I, I almost cried because I was very sad not to be singing in the choir. But I also heard the words of that anthem, may I be still, let me be silent, listen to my heart, especially the part that speaks to me silently. And I guess it reminded me that, you know, there are lessons from COVID. So stopping and listening perhaps is one of those lessons. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. Uh, Nancy, if you would like to turn your camera and mic on to share your announcement. Yes, hi. Um, about a month ago, I mentioned that I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of the resettlement committee for Seaham and her family. Um, and about a month ago, I mentioned that we had heard that privately sponsored refugees were starting to move to Canada. And I would say pretty much every day since then, I have been 
um, answering two questions. One is, uh, do you know when they're coming yet? And the second one is, how can I help? And today, um, I can answer both of those questions because just this past week, we learned that they have uh, tickets for a flight on the 27th of November. So the countdown is on. Also, this past week, we went to council to initiate the final sprint for fundraising for Siham, her seven children, and her nephew, Fatty, who will be arriving hopefully by spring. So this is a way that you can help. All but $15,000 that we need has already been raised, so we need to still raise the final 15. And we would really love to be able to say that this is pledged or in the bank by the time they arrive. You'll be receiving a letter in over email this week that outlines the ways that you can make that donation. The letter will also tell you a little of their story and it has an updated photo of the family that we just got through WhatsApp. The sponsorship is about bringing this family to a safer place, but it's also about building a relationship with them. And so it's helpful to have some sense of who they are and where they're from at this moment. Other ways that you can help include making material donations, and for those, please contact Kobe Love. If you have a lead on a house or accommodation for eight people and eventually nine, please let Glenn Harper know. Thanks. Um, last week, Joe reminded us that faith and life are inseparable, that loving God is loving neighbor, and vice versa. Thank you all for being part of this faithful work. Thanks, Nancy, and thanks for sharing that really exciting news with us all and for the, the work and dedication of everyone on the Resettlement Committee. We are so grateful for all that you're doing and will be doing in the days and weeks ahead. Uh, Roberta, you had an announcement. I'll invite you to turn your camera and mic on. Is it, uh... <clears throat> oh, hello everyone. If you like to bake and also like to help members of our committee, Outreach has a good project for you program at a better tent city. A Better Tent City is a community of homeless people living in 40 tiny insulated cabins. The first Thursday of every month, dessert for 40 people will be delivered to a Better Tent City. A contribution of a baked or bought dessert for 10 to 12 people would be most appreciated. No nut or allergy concerns, and desserts must be in a non-returnable non container. If you would like to participate, please. Our first dessert drop-off is this Thursday, um, November the 5th. Wendy and I will be at the church to between quarter to five and five o'clock to receive desserts. So um, if you can help, Give us a shout. We'd love to help out um, Better Tent City with some yummy desserts. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Roberta. Uh, seeing no other announcements, I'd like to invite Linda Bird at this time to turn her camera and mic on as she shares our statement of welcome. Good morning, I'm Linda Bird, and I'd like to share our call to worship. In gratitude and with respect, we begin by recognizing our First Nations on whose traditional land we make our spiritual home, the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and the Neutral. We acknowledge with regret that this history has rarely been respectful. We commit to just relationship in the present. Along with First Nations everywhere, we recognize Earth as our mother, upon whose water, air, and soil we depend for our lives and our well-being. In the midst of a climate crisis, we acknowledge that as a species, we have not acted with respect for our precious planet. We commit to learning and practicing better stewardship. Seeking true community, we welcome all who have no church home, need strength, and are seeking deep meaning. 
Welcome to those who have doubts or who do not believe. Welcome to those whose faith is sure and to those who believe but are, who are asking large questions. Welcome to visitors, family, familiar friends. Welcome to grandparents, mothers, fathers, youth and children, couples and single people. Welcome to people of all colors, gender identities, abilities, and sexual orientations. Welcome to each of you who is seeking an understanding of community and what it means to accompany one another. As we come together as church, we hold one another in gratitude and pray that we'll, we will be strong together, faithful together, and loving together. We seek blessing as we welcome the great gift of spirit in us, through us, and among us. Thank you, Linda. And if you have uh, candles uh, and matches or something to light them with at the ready, I would invite you to get ready now as we prepare to, to light our candles. Friends, God's love knows no bounds. It draws us and keeps us together, even as we are physically apart. It's this love that Jesus embodied. As Christ's candles are lit this morning, May we be bonded together as the body of Christ, living lights in our communities. So I invite us to light our candles together at this time. For all the saints who went before us, who have spoken to our hearts and touched us with their faith. For all the saints who live beside us, whose weaknesses and strengths are woven with our own. For all the saints who live beyond us, who challenge us to change the world with them. For the whole communion of saints we give thanks and heed their call to gather the holy community passed on to us by the saints. Christ the peace that frees us all are welcome 
So friends, as we come before the stories of our faith and seek a word of hope, a word of love, a word of meaning for our lives and for our world, let's just join together in prayer and ask for some help in that task. Holy mystery, these words that form the stories of our faith have challenged and comforted countless generations. We are inheritors of a tradition that seeks the word from among the words. May we hear the wisdom of those who have gone before us. May we hear the call for us today. May we be blessed with the joining of tradition and fresh revelation that we might be a light to those who come after us. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. Before God and Jesus Christ, whose reign is imminent, I give you a command. Christ Jesus is the one who will judge all people, those who are living and those who have died. Tell everyone God's message. Be ready at all times to do whatever is needed. Tell people what they need to do. Tell them when they are doing wrong and encourage them. Do this with great patience and careful teaching. The time will come when people will not listen to the true teaching, but people will find more and more teachers who please them. They will find teachers who say what they want to hear. People will stop listening to the truth. They will begin to follow the teaching and false stories. But you, be vigilant at all times. When troubles come, accept them. Do the work of telling the good news. Do all the duties of a servant of God. One more slide, Joe, thanks. <laughs> as for me, my life is being given as an offering for God. The time has come for me to leave this life here. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. May its wisdom shape us and lead us.
Thank you, Darlene and Dolores. On All Saints Sunday, we remember that the church in the 21st century stands on the shoulders of all those who, like the writer of 2 Timothy, fought the good fight and have now finished the race. They were people like us, faithful and unfaithful, righteous and sinful, human and divine. In the wake of Jesus' death and resurrection, they formed communities of caring. They were martyred for their faith. They were seduced by the power of the Roman Empire. They preserved the intellectual heritage of the West in our monasteries during the Dark Ages. They founded hospitals and schools. They devastated cultures, religions, and people. We abused, they promoted slavery and abolished it. We abused our power and empowered the poor. We keep going. There's no arriving in this Christian journey. There is no completion. We stumble in faith. We do the best we can. But we remember that we live in God's world, that we're not alone. I read a story this week about an American pastor, Rick Thine, who shared this. At my church when I was a kid, he said, we had a balcony that wrapped around the building and you could look up and see the people you cared about. They were the people urging him on, encouraging him when he offered his gifts in worship. They were my balcony people, he said. And when some loved one dies, I feel they become balcony people in my life, cheering me on, wishing me well, commiserating with me when I fail or feel sad on all on this all saints sunday we remember the communion of saints those fallible lovable people who did their best to surrender to the good news who bequeathed to us this faith this treasure in clay jars who sit in our balconies watching praying loving each one of us and that communion of saints reaches back to the beginning of time and so we're gathered here with abraham sarah and hagar with moses and deborah with ruth naomi and david we gather with all those grumblers in the desert who persecuted the prophets and kept the faith in exile. We're gathered with Mary and Jesus, with Peter and Mary Magdalene, with the women, the lepers, the prostitutes, the tax collectors, and all the outsiders who found mercy and acceptance through Jesus. We're here with the founders of the church, with Paul and Lydia. We are inheritors of the faith from the church fathers, Augustine, Tertullian, and the early martyrs, Polycarp, Perpetua, 
and felicity. We gather with the countless who embrace the faith as good news, as liberation from the categories of slave and master, woman and man, Jew and Gentile. And the faith was passed to Anselm, Hildegard of Bingen, Julian of Norwich, Francis of Assisi, Teresa of Avila, the countless who worked and died building cathedrals, the monks and the nuns who opened monasteries and convents to strangers and the poor. We are children of the Reformation birthed by Martin Luther, Katharina Van Bora, John Calvin, George Fox, the countless who risked their lives for a deeper understanding of the good news of Jesus. And our Methodist roots were planted in the soil of the Anglican Church led by Thomas Cranmer and bore fruit in Methodist founders John and Charles Wesley, the many who embraced the call for a deeper spiritual life. We are inheritors of the United Church of Canada from people like George Pidgeon, our first moderator, Lydia Grucci, our first woman minister, and other leaders like Wilbur Howard and Squire, Seng Chul Lee, Alvin Dixon. We are inheritors of the faith from those who have worked tirelessly to serve God through their congregations, baking pies, teaching children, housing the poor and the addicted, repairing roofs and boilers, comforting the grieving. Before us came those who through their faith took courageous stands and led the way in bringing in public universal education and universal health care, making the church a social leader. Here at Parkminster, some of those first saints who have passed on include the Chambers, Merv Nodder, the McCallums, the Dunbars, Alan Duxbury, the Lambs, Marge Heinbeck, and all who joined them in that gym at Harold Wagner School in the 50s and eventually at 275 Herb Street East. We want to give you an opportunity to reflect on and name the saints who have left you a legacy of faith. But first, a reminder about who the saints are in our tradition. You talk about saints. I thought when you become a saint, I mean, there's a process, but like if you open up like an orphanage in every country. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, we have a, I mean, we have a, a sort of Lutheran understanding of the saints, which is the people of God, right? Instead of the really special ones who did, who are more God-like than us, you know? Because what we celebrate in the saints isn't the godliness of the person, it, what we celebrate in the saints is God's ability to do beautiful, redemptive stuff through the most broken means possible, which is a flawed human being. Um, it's incredible what God can accomplish through broken people. So that's the thing we're celebrating in the saints. So we each have those we count as our own saints, a cloud of witnesses that walks with us the path of faith, those people who fill our balconies. So who are the people who are no longer with us that have inspired you, nurtured you to live a life of loving service in the world? These might be people you know personally or those who have inspired you and shaped you from afar. 
So I would invite you to name those people in the chat uh, feature, and um, we'll we'll read them uh, aloud uh, this this morning. And I was thinking about some of those saints for me, and um, um, all of those who I know personally are still living. So uh, I guess I just want to lift up some of those from afar. Um, the writers like Henry Nowen and, and Scott Peck, and of course, and uh, Martin Luther King Jr., whose speeches and writings had a, a great impact on my, my faith journey as well. Yeah, I guess, well, for me, Joe, um, certainly many family members that are no longer with us, my parents, my grandparents, uh, my Uncle Ron, my mother-in-law, but I also think um, a, a woman from a former congregation, her name was Linda Parsons, and she was mm -hmm. just incredible in the work that she did with Indigenous peoples, and her passion and commitment to right relations not only inspired me, but countless others, and continues to, to shape, I think, the United Church and the work we're doing. So yeah. I want to lift up her this day and remember her. Well, you've reminded me of a couple of people. I want to lift up a... Uh a couple of beautiful men, uh, Vic Bauer in Horn Payne when I was there and, uh, and Herb Kruger uh, in Perry Sound uh, as, as, as well. And uh, folks, are there the names of saints in your own lives that you would like to, to lift up? Um, I just invite you to share them. Yeah, Joe, chat. just on, on Facebook, I'm seeing one from, from Lori McKim Lang, who's naming her grandmother, Elizabeth Reed McKim, and wants okay. to remember her this day. So we do that, Lori. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and uh, excuse me if I mispronounce some of these names, but uh, 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 Barb Wynn, her uh, grandmother, Mina Wynn, um, uh, Nicholas Homan, Adri Adriana Bacalar, that's from Sandy, uh, this morning. Yeah. And Debbie sharing Vera Curry, Jean Middlebrook, and Grandma Annie Powell, and Sue remembering her grandmother, Mary Snyder. Yeah. Uh, Deb uh, Searsma, uh, Peggy Montague, former Healing Fund uh, coordinator, Shirley, uh, Bruce's dad, Dick Mutton, and Kathy, Ted's mom, Audrey Oldfield. Uh, Mel remembering her mom, Ruth Hyman. And Laura Cudworth remembering Isabel Cudworth, Eddie Cudworth, Winnie Gordon, the Drurys, the Bowers, Meg Green. Mm -hmm. uh, Jocelyn Alexander, her Oma, Wilhelmina Kleingeld, who passed on her faith to her. And Bob Barb. and Barb, uh, Ora Bell Wynn, uh, mom. Go ahead. Uh, Dana naming her daughter as a saint in her life. <laughs> and Roxy remembering Francois Girard. Kathleen remembering her father. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, uh, Isabel uh, McGregor, who just uh, left us a year ago. Uh, Lisa Hicknell, her grandpa, Merv Nodder, and my great uncle, Neil Wilkinson. And the Pease family remembering Jeff's uncle, John Dawson, and Kate's grandmother, Charlotte Noel de Tilly. Mm -hmm. Barb Pryor remembering her mom. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kathleen remembering uh, Point Maker. Um, Shelley Mutton, her dear cousin Pamela, who passed away this week. Our condolences. Yeah. Deb remembering Joe Maiman and from Lynn McNiff. Uh, Edna Grant, who led the children's group at Young Street Mission in Toronto when she was eight. Uh, she saved me in many ways and gave me faith that kept me through many hard times. Mm -hmm. Uh, Nancy Dykstra, uh, her mother's parents who took in Jewish people and resistance uh, members in Northern Holland uh, during the Second World War, uh, Seitz and Rolinda Hilverda. Uh, Deb remembering Reverend James Redock and mm -hmm. Wilma and John remembering John's parents, Adriana and Cornelius Bacalar, and for Wilma, her father, Nick Holman, and Reverend Mike Locke. Mm -hmm. Also seen from Ruth and Delbert, uh, my father, Andrew Weber, a man of absolute integrity. And, and uh, Lonnie, Lonnie, uh, Lonnie, her granny, Johanna, uh, Den, Den Blaker, and her father, Frank Kerbel, and her nephew, uh, Matthew Dunseith. Okay, and Kathleen, just correcting a, a typo, it was Poundmaker, not Poundmaker. So thank you, okay. Kathleen. Thank you.
Um, and just Joe, just looking back on Facebook, um, from Jillian Mackenzie York, her mom Cheryl, lifting her up as a saint yeah. for sure. Thank you. So friends, thank you for sharing all those um, important people in your lives, those communion of that communion of saints that have passed on the faith and helped to form you in the faith. Thank you for your ongoing support of the ministry and mission of Parkminster United Church and the United Church of Canada through the Mission and Service Fund. Because of your thoughtfulness and generosity, the hungry are being fed, the lonely are accompanied, the grieving are consoled, the oppressed are joined in solidarity. Because of your gifts, God's love persists in the midst of the turn turmoil and uncertainty of our times. Friends, we are inheritors of a church and a mission because of the legacy of those saints whose faith compelled them to give out of a sense of abundance and grace. Bruce Mutton, chair of our stewardship committee, shares with us one story of the difference a legacy gift is still making today. Oh, wow, is it ever cold out there? I just got in from walking the dog. Good morning. My name is Bruce Mutton, and I am the chair of the stewardship team at Parkminster. This morning, I want to talk to you about an incredible lady who was a member of Parkminster United Church for a long time, many years ago. She was a teacher. She was dedicated to Christian education at the church. The reason I'm thinking about her is because she didn't drive. She walked everywhere. So she walked from the house that she lived in on Union Street in Kitchener all the way to her school, which was just up St. Ledger. Her name was Mabel Miller. And the reason I want to talk about her is because when she passed away, she left a sizable gift to the church to be used 
for educational purposes, for Christian education, for student ministers, for workshops. And it is a planned gift that Mabel Miller gave that continues to live on with her memory. It's administered by the trustees of our church. And every year, the interest from that amount of money that she donated upon her passing is used for the purposes that I mentioned. It's a planned gift. It's a legacy for Mabel Miller. A legacy of a financial gift that will live on for a very, very long time. Every year, it's estimated that about $3,200 is used from the Mabel Miller Fund. There are a number of other people who have done the same thing. And the Stewardship Committee would like to focus on planned giving. In 2021, that is probably what we will be focusing on. In, in November of 2019, the stewardship team coordinated and implemented a successful stewardship campaign called Inspire to Give. That campaign increased our donations by about 10%. We want to remain leaders in the community for outreach and for community development. We want to be here for many, many years to come. So legacy giving is one way that we can be and remain leaders in our community. So stay tuned in 2021 for some workshops, some information sessions on how you could possibly be a planned giving person, family. Thank you. So friends, let's give thanks uh, for the many gifts um, and the givings of this congregation. Great mystery you continually give to us. Each breath is a gift, each heartbeat unearned, each bite of food alms from the earth, each drink of water an offering of life to us. Responding to this generosity we give out of gratitude, we dedicate our lives to your way of love. Receive our offerings as a sign of our gratitude and commitment. May they be blessed for the healing of the world. Amen. And so let us come together in prayer to reflect on and share the yearnings, the struggles, and the joys of our lives. And so friends, we're wondering if you have any concerns or blessings that you'd like to share with us this week. If you have a prayer request that you are comfortable sharing on Zoom, but would prefer that it not be broadcast online, please just type the word private before your concern and we will not read it out aloud. Uh, and I would invite you to use the chat feature and for those on Facebook, the comment section, to type the joys and concerns you'd like to share with each other. Mm -hmm. And I'm just mm -hmm. noting, noting, Joe, that we had another saint to lift up, uh, Bill's father, Chuck Spall. So yes. we'll do that yes. and honor him at this time. And, and then we, we have, have some others. Well, we have the blessings of a couple of birthdays mm -hmm. uh, early uh, on when we were welcoming everybody in. So uh, I, I remember one was Sheila. I can't remember the other okay. one. Okay. I wrote them down. Okay. <laughs> so Sheila, of course, yes. And Kathleen's is coming up Wednesday. And then I believe I saw a note that it's Mary Sanders' birthday coming up as well. Okay. So happy birthday wishes to all of you. We're, we're blessed that you're all in our midst. Yeah. And we continue to hold in prayer um, Neil, Neil's uh, father, Lyle, um, who is uh, recovering uh, prayers for, uh, for, for Mary, Mary Sander and her family, as they mourn the loss of, um, of her adult grandson, Kyle, to a drug overdose. And just noting both from, from John Bacalar, but also we just wanted to share that we're happy that Wilma is back home from the hospital and all is well. And just we pray for healing for you, Wilma, and we're so glad that you're home. 
We also want to offer prayers for Jim Bowman's cousin, Paula, who is undergoing a liver transplant tomorrow mm -hmm. and send prayers to her and the family. Mm -hmm. Prayers also for Seaham and family as they prepare for their long-awaited journey to Canada and prayers for the Resettlement Committee for their ongoing and amazing work. Yeah. Kathy wants to lift up the blessing of a loving Parkminster uh, community and uh, Jocelyn prayers for the Bufa family for the loss of their father, father-in-law and grandfather as well. Kevin uh, uh, wanting prayers for the U.S. during this election period. Mm -hmm. Oh, and oh, another birthday, uh, Colleen Usadi, my baby from Sue turns 20 this week. So happy, happy birthday, birthday to Colleen. Birthday. That's wonderful. I'm just keeping an eye on Facebook too, Joe, but nothing okay. yet. Oh, Laura saying, giving thanks for warm drinks that can be shared with loved ones over Zoom. Mm -hmm. Anything else on Facebook, Heather? Nothing on Facebook. And to our friends on Facebook, we do apologize. There is a little bit of a lag, so we sometimes miss those requests. Yes. From Sarah, the prayers requested for her niece that had brain surgery this past week. Oh, and from Debbie, uh, thank you to Heather, Joe, and the whole council for keeping us connected. Thank you. Thank you Debbie. Yes, thank you to all the leaders in this wonderful mm -hmm. community. Nancy, grateful for the progress made between the land back camp and the city of Kitchener. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. very, very positive. And now hoping that Waterloo does that work as well. Mm -hmm. Well, let us pray. Holy One, we meet you in prayer this day, asking for hope and guidance during these times of great uncertainty. We lift our hearts in prayer for all those protesting injustices, for those at the land back camp, for those in Montreal where a peaceful protest in support of the Mi'kmaq lobster fishers is happening this weekend, in Philadelphia where Walter Wallace Jr a black man experiencing a mental health crisis was shot and killed by police. In Nigeria, amid the NSARS week-long protests, where dozens of unarmed demonstrators were killed this week at two different demonstrations. We ask for your peace in place of our injustice. Days before election day in the United States, many of us are nervously praying for a just election and for all who are able to make their voice heard at the polls. We ask for your calm in place of our anxiety. We pray for the world during this global pandemic as countries contemplate fresh lockdowns amid the surge of new COVID-19 deaths. Many of us feel completely discouraged. We pray for our province where case numbers continue to rise. We pray particularly for France where there's a record number of new cases. And especially for refugee camps in Syria where the cases have risen tenfold. We pray for those navigating illnesses, surgeries, treatments, and other health challenges in the midst of the pandemic for those struggling with mental health and addictions, for those who are grieving losses and for those feeling isolated with COVID restrictions and limitations. We ask for your hope in place of our despair. O God of all people, grant us open minds, eyes and hearts for all that we can learn during this uncertain time, for new understanding, for abundant generosity and for more love that we may learn to truly be your beloved community. We celebrate the work of the 43rd General Council of the United Church of Canada who declared the denomination to become an anti-racist church for the ongoing work at all levels of the church to address systemic racism. We pray for and give thanks for Adele Halliday in her new position of anti-racism and equity officer 
be with her in her important work and bless the many gifts she will share in this role. On this 62nd anniversary of Parkminster United Church, we give thanks for all people in this community, past, present, and future. And we take some moments of silence now to offer our thanks, hold space for those concerns, remember the saints that have touched our lives, and lift up the joys and concerns shared together this day. We give thanks for the witnesses of the faith, O oh God, for those who have helped us to hear the story of your people, for the ways the story has touched our lives. Thank you for the evangelists who have written the Gospels, for the power of their telling. Thank you for the prophets, past and present, who have disturbed us, for their ability to help us examine our living. Thank you for those people we have known who have lived out the faith, for the inspiration they have been to us. Thank you for the courageous disciples who have stood up for their beliefs, for their example. Help us also to be witnesses to the faith. Let our living be consistent with our believing. Help us to be powerful prophets. Let our work of justice and compassion influence our society. Help us to be disciples serving and ministering in your name. Let us convey everywhere the graciousness of your love. Open our eyes to see your unanticipated blessings. Open our hearts to welcome you when you come to us in unexpected ways. Then guide us by the Spirit into a community of blessedness that beckons this neighborhood into your joy. We ask these things in the name of Jesus, who blesses us with your living presence and fills our lives with your life-changing truth. Amen.
Friends, go from here both challenged and comforted by the Spirit. Go from here accompanied by the communion of saints. Go from here to leave a legacy of love to those who will follow you. And may the blessing of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all, be with you as you go. Friends, the light of Christ that's with us in worship is a light that we are called to take to the world with us. May the smoke that rises from the candle be a reminder that the Spirit goes with us into the week, leading us and calling us to deeper faith and joy. So thank you for being with us uh, this, uh, this morning. If you need to go um, at this time, uh, have a, we hope you have a good week uh, this week uh, coming, coming up, um, whether you're joining us on Facebook or on Zoom. Um, if you'd like to stick around, please feel free to stick around, turn your cameras on at this time, and I will stop our live stream. Okay, thanks, Joe.